Hey everyone, we got to talk about the reported William Nylander contract. Apparently it could be announced as soon as Monday, so I have to give my thoughts. I'll probably give my thoughts after it's announced and just kind of talk about Nylander's time in Toronto more in detail and talk about how I see the contract and the future and all these things, but let's just react to what Elliot Freeman said tonight and the reported number is $11.5 million per for eight years. A lot of people are going to have the criticism around it. I mean, as we're recording this, Nylander had two goals tonight against San Jose for a three-point night. But let's uh, let's watch what Freeman had to say tonight on Saturday headlines. <laughs> William Nylander, let's start there. Look, it's it's getting close. The Toronto the principals aren't talking. The Maple Leafs fly home from San Jose on Sunday, and we could see this as soon as Monday. And I do believe the AAV for Nylander is going to be around eleven and a half million dollars a year. Now, obviously, there's going to be a ton of debate about this. I think, quite simply, it came down to one fact. The Toronto Maple Leafs wanted to keep the player. They think he's a good player and a big part of their future. And this was the price that it took to get him for eight years. And that's what they're going to do. So, think I just want to say quickly, I mean, at the end of the day, he made $2 million per year by betting on himself. I, I really do think they would have signed in around 9.5, maybe max 10 in the offseason. I think if the Leafs had offered Nylander even close to 10, I think he would have accepted that in the offseason. So at the bare minimum, he made himself at least $1.5 million per year over an eight-year term. I think we could see it as soon as Monday around $11.5 million a year. What about the percentage of the cap? And does this 13. put them in a real 13%? Okay, you answered that. Uh, the core five, does this put them in a real binder? Is cap going up? Solved. Cap's going up. And, you know, like the one thing is, is that the calendar dictated you had to deal with Nylander now. So they had a choice. And they, I think they said, we want to do this, and then we'll deal with everything else as we have to. How about Connor Bedard? Fractured jaw, any up to So at the end there, Ron McLean mentioned Connor Bedard. want to wish my best to Connor Bedard. Really tough situation there. Uh, we'll see if we see him at the All-Star break, but obviously they're going to worry about his health first. But just in terms of Nylander, I think overall, just my quick thoughts. It, to me, we're picking at, again, uh, 1500000 per year to either like keep him or lose him in, like, entirely. And I think when you look at Austin Matthews, I, I, I was feeling very similar, right? I felt Matthews should have been maxed at the Connor McDavid amount. Regardless of the cap picture, regardless of the future of the salary cap, regardless of any of those things, I thought based on the lack of playoff success, Matthew should have been at 12.5, which probably brought Nylander down to 10.5. Unfortunately, this is the domino effect, folks. Agree with it or not, I'm not here to, to say if I agree with it in terms of that precedent because I, I really, I personally do not. <laughs> so I'm not really talking about that here. I'm talking about more so the results of the domino effect and Matthew signed the deal that he did. Unfortunately, now it's Mitch Marner time a year from now, essentially, or even sooner to come this offseason. But I do think 11.5, I'm really thinking Marner should not be a penny more than that. But unfortunately, knowing the, the luck of the draw here, Marner's going to bet on himself now too because he saw Nylander do it, and, and Marner might make some more money. So we'll see what happens, guys. But the cap is going up. I think at the very least... By 2026, 2027, we'll see the salary cap get closer and closer to 100 million. So, as Elliot Friedman said, Nylander is going to be 13% of the salary cap for next year, but three years from now, he'll be less than 10% for a guy that, if he's still putting up 30 goals on the board, we won't be complaining about this contract. We just won't because of the percentage of the cap. You have to compare it to the past years of what contracts have been, where guys have been signed for eight, nine million and been putting up those numbers, eight, nine million five years ago is going to be the same as 10, 11, 12 million five years from now because of the salary cap increase. So to me, I'm not ecstatic about it. I, I really think you should have done everything you could to get it under that $11 million number. And I, I've been saying that because I think there was a threshold there in October when he was obviously having a good start to the season where I was like, okay, you give Nylander 10 million now. Then November came and he was still buzzing and it's like, okay, this guy's pushing himself closer to 11 million at this point. And then obviously just the streak he's been on. I mean, guys, we're talking about a guy that's basically on pace for 120 points. I think right now it's like 118, 119 adding to tonight where he had three points. 
Um, I made a video a few weeks ago and he was on pace for like 110 points and his streak has just kept going. He's got like 54 points and under 40 games. It's a ridiculous pace he's got going right now. Um, I think he's played 37 games. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's just how it is right now for the Nylander situation. So 11.5 million. I'm not going crazy over it, but shout out to my brother who probably is. And you know what? Monday or Tuesday when it gets announced, I'll try to bring my brother on for a reaction or something. If you guys don't know, he's a huge Nylander guy. So give me your thoughts, guys. I'm not huge on it. I'm not very positive. I'm not very negative. I'm just like, you know what? The Leafs are keeping a very great player in the league. They are keeping a, easily a top 50 player in the league. They're keeping a guy that can put 30 goals on the board every year. And they're, to me, they're keeping a guy that has actually the proof of longevity up to this point, right? Like plays a lot of games, plays a lot of minutes, puts a lot of points on the board. His skating shows to be a guy that can play a long time, right? It's not like a lot of these guys that end early to mid thirties, the skating's a concern. That's not a concern for Nylander, right? He's one of the best skaters out there. He's probably the most smooth skater next to Marner on this team. I think Marner's a different kind of skater, but we know how Nylander, his strides look. So I'll leave it at that guys. I think it's okay. I, I think it's okay. I think for me, the numbers should have always been in the 10 range um, even with the streak, because I look at guys like Braden Point, Akita Kucherov, guys that have won Stanley Cups, and they're in the nine range, right? And I know the cap's gone up, and I know tax is a conversation, but I, I would have felt a lot better if this contract was at 10.5 versus 11.5. I really think that $1 million makes a difference in the long haul. Same with Matthews. I understand you can get a lot more in the open market. Nylander could have got a lot more in the open market. I, I've been saying I'm confident that if he went to the open market, Teams like Chicago, teams that have the money to spend would be giving them over $12 million easily. So the Leafs get them at 11 and a half if this is what ends up happening or maybe it goes crash and burn. I don't know. But Elliot Freeman is probably the most reliable source in hockey. So I'm going to say it's going to happen. So give me your thoughts, guys. Subscribe, like, comment, notification bell. Nylander, eight years, $11.5 million. We're talking about over $90 million over the course of his contract, potentially $92 million. We'll see what happens. Nylander, staying in Toronto as it seems right now. Talk soon. Peace.